Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Can you make luck happen? Well, today we'll ask the expert, Janice Kaplan. Janice, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Now, Janice, your book begins, Luck is What Happens When Preparation Meets Opportunity. Well, I've been preparing for this show, and I think this is a great opportunity for our audience. So do we qualify? Absolutely. We'll, we'll make it a lucky half hour for everybody listening. How's okay, this, because I find this subject fantastic, very, very interesting, and I hope our audience does too. Um, is it true that people can actually make themselves luckier? I mean, you know, we, we kind of have the feeling that Aunt Sally or Uncle Joe, they're, they're just lucky people. They bend over and find a quarter or a $20 bill or the uh, four-leaf clover. But can we make ourselves luckier? Absolutely. And I think one of the pleasures for me in writing this book was in thinking about luck in a different way, because uh, the examples you just gave and the way most of us think about luck is something that just falls from the sky, right? You're either lucky or you're not. And that didn't make a lot of sense to me because most of us want to be able to control things in our lives and to control a little bit more of the luck that comes our way. So we started to think about luck as having three strands. One of them is the one you just described, that random chance, the finding the dollar, the four-leaf clover, the, 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 uh, the luck falling from the sky. You can't do too much about those. So let's put that aside for a minute. The other two strands are hard work and talent. Um, hard work, I am going to define for you right now, is hard work. <laughs> There's no, no other way to describe it. Talent, though, is very complicated. Talent isn't just that you, you know, act like Meryl Streep or, or sing like Beyonce. Talent includes a whole bucket of things like recognizing opportunities and seeing possibilities and doing something that we call zigging when others zag. <laughs> it's understanding how to network. It's understanding how to see um, far beyond um, the, 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 little, the little circle that we sometimes have for ourselves. So what happens, Bill, is when you put together that talent and that hard work, when you put together those two buckets, those two strands, you don't have to worry so much about the random chance, because if the good things happen in that random chance, well, you're in a position to take advantage of them. If bad things happen, you don't have to worry about it so much, because you've got two-thirds of the equation taken care of on the positive side. So once you start thinking about luck in that way, you realize that, yes, you can change your luck, you can turn things around, and you can have more control over the success, the good luck, and the positive things that happen in your life than you might have thought. And I think that's great because at least when I feel I have some control over something, and when I start taking action personally, right away, I really just feel personally better. I don't know if it's some internal chemicals, but if I start the day off doing things, whether it's writing checks or, or taking care of some things I've put off, it just makes me feel more powerful, let's put it that way. And... Um, I think you say in the book that many events that seem like they're random are really not random at all. So what would that, can you give us an example of something that would fit into that category? Well, you know, um, uh, I mentioned picking a four-leaf clover, and as I was saying that, I realized that I use that in the book as an example of something that's not random. So four-leaf clovers are very rare, and if you find a four-leaf clover, you immediately think, wow, it's an amazing day. Well, there is the chance that you'll just look down and happen to see one, but um, we, we tell a story in, in, in the book about um, some little kids who were, who were out playing, and, and one of them ran off and just kept looking and looking and looking for a four-leaf clover, and she wouldn't give up, and she had that absolute persistence and uh, that tenacity, and she was going to find that four-leaf clover. And of course she did, because when you're willing to commit the time and the effort to something, you, you get it, and you feel very lucky. And she plucked that four-leaf clover and ran back to her friends, who of course then said, oh, look how lucky she is, and, and now she's going to have an even luckier day. Well, guess what? She is going to have an even luckier day, because now she feels lucky. 
And uh, you, you, you describe that sense of control, that sense of positivity that you have when you've done something, when you've succeeded at something, and when you have that positive attitude of saying, I can make something else happen because I just made this happen, then you're much more likely to be successful. And, and by the way, let me just add that I think another reason to look at luck in the way we, we're describing, in the way we're talking about it right now, is that so many of us just pass things off that have happened in our lives lives as luck. We say, oh, I was so lucky I got into that college. I was so lucky I met that person. I was so lucky I got that job. If you think of it that way, you can't make it happen again. So what I really urge people to do is to take a couple of steps back. And yeah, you were lucky to get that job, but how did you happen to get the interview? What did you say at the interview? Who connected you to the person? Take it back and you start to realize all the things you put into it that led to that luck. And once you do that, it's pretty exciting because then you realize, okay, I can do this again. It's not something that randomly happened and that I have no control over in the future. Now, Janice, you've been the author, I think, of 13 books. Am I correct? Maybe more. You are, yes. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, obviously you qualify under the heading of someone who's not only a writer, but a prolific one and bestsellers and, and top books that we would know. And you work with a partner in something called the Luck Lab. So you're, the, I guess, the writer putting it down, and he's the uh, experimenter, I guess, or uh, trying out new things. Um, are you finding this to be either one of the most interesting or uh, fantastic of the, of the uh, research that you've done in the past? Well, I've, you know, I've uh, I've had the great opportunity to do some terrific books. Um, the book I did before this one uh, was called The Gratitude Diaries. And for that book, I spent a year living gratefully. Um, and that was really what taught me about the... the uh, uh, the power of being positive, the power that we all have to reframe a situation and to see things from a different perspective. And one of the reasons I got interested in luck was one of the things that people were so excited about with the Gratitude Diaries, which was a New York Times bestseller and continues to sort of have a life of its own to, to my great joy, um, uh, it, it, is that it did give people a sense of how they can control things better, that it's not the events in life that make us happy, but how we look at them. And so I started thinking about what are the other things that happen that we think of as out of our control, but really when we get a new perspective, we realize how much we can change them. And obviously, luck came right in, and, and uh, uh, I had the pleasure of connecting with Barnaby Marsh. And Barnaby um, is an academic, and he has positions at both Princeton and Harvard and uh, he had been a Rhodes Scholar where he had done his work on risk. And so once we started take, talking about this subject, we were, we were both very excited about it. And Barnaby was at the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton at the time, um, and uh, which is, you know, the home of people like Albert Einstein. Um, it's, it's a great place with, with big thinkers. And so uh, Barnaby was going uh, a couple of days a week there and thinking big thoughts about luck and coming up with algorithms for it and coming up with, with mathematical formulas of how you create luck. And then we would meet and talk about it and put it in, uh, in down-to-earth terms and in ways that people can actually access. Um, so that was really exciting to be able to take that as a science and to think of it um, in scientific terms. It's a new science, uh, but any science begins by thinking in new terms, by, by starting with new equations. By the way, there aren't any equations in the book. My job was to make this fun and simple to read. Um, but, uh, but yes, indeed, we started thinking of it as the science of luck, and, uh, and we hope that that research and science will continue. Uh, Janice, we'd like to let our audience know if you're enjoying what you're hearing about luck, you're listening to this show on The Secrets of Success on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, and today our guest is Janice Kaplan. She's the author of How Luck Happens. Fantastic book, a great read. Janice, if people want to know more about this, is there a website where they can go to? Sure, you can come to my website, which is uh, just JaniceKaplan.com. Uh, lots of information about uh, about this book and others. Um, and I also have websites for, for both of the last two books. There is a HowLuckHappens.com website and a GratitudeDiaries.com website. Um, and both books are available at Amazon or your favorite local bookstore.
which we always like to support. And we'll give, thank you. And we'll give that information later on in the show. So if someone out there says, gee, I'm just never the lucky person, you could turn things around according to Janice. And by the way, Kaplan is spelled K-A-P-L-A-N if you're looking for it. And if you're looking for the author, and it's a nice green cover, which kind of reminds us of that four-leaf clover. I was just thinking how you'd pick green, and then I see the uh, the four-leaf clover on the top of it. So uh, I'm guessing the two of those went together. Um, well, the four-leaf clover is inside a beaker. So it's, it's it, it is very of luck. It's not random luck. <laughs> very creative. No, I love that. I, I, everything about the book uh, I think is great, and I think our audience is going to enjoy it. We often hear sports people say, oh, that that player was so lucky. What a lucky catch he made. We would have won the game. But as I'm reading your book, I'm thinking, yes, that player may have made an extremely tough play. But it's probably because before the game, he went over the metrics or she went over the statistics for the other players. They were playing in the right position or they knew at a certain time in the game the other team would use a certain play. And that that's what I came out of the book with. Am I on the right track? You are 100% on the right oh, track. Oh, good. I'm glad that, I got that um, right. <laughs> <laughs> that so often um, what appears to be luck is really getting the right information. Uh, we need to have information to, 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 figure, to figure stuff out, and whether that's in sports or in life. Um, and sometimes when things look like they're luck or bad luck, it may be just that we didn't know the right thing to look for. Here's here's a lovely little story that that Barnaby, uh, my co-author on the book, uh, came up with, and and he, and he did it for me as a thought experiment. And if I, I'm happy to share it with your your listeners also. So he talked about how about if you're approaching a dark tunnel, and at the end of the tunnel is a big reward. I don't know, a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, whatever you need to think of as being a big reward at the end of the tunnel. If you walk through the dark tunnel, you can get it. Are you going to do that? Well, probably. But now how about if I tell you that only 50% of the people who walk through get to the other end because there's a big pothole in the middle and half of them fall in and don't come out. Well, 50%, you're probably not going to walk through that tunnel now because that's not very good odds. Okay, now I'm going to add another piece of information, which is that the people who make it through have a flashlight. They can see the hole. They walk around it. The people who fall in don't have a flashlight. Okay, answer done now. Go to your local drugstore, spend two bucks buying a little headlamp, put it on, you can walk through, you're going to be fine, you're going to get that big reward at the end. So life is not usually that clear, right? It's not usually that clear what the steps are and what the pieces of information are. But when you're trying to be lucky, when you're trying to make something happen, think about it in those terms. Think about what's the one thing that might help me make this decision? What's the one thing that might help me know, you know, where to stand to make that catch? Um, and the more information you have, whether it's in sports, in business, in your love life, uh, the, the more you're going to be able to make a decision that others looking at it are going to think is a very lucky one. So right now I'm thinking, based on what you just told me, the next time I'm going to go in for a raise, I'm going to ask people, is the boss in a good mood? Did he have or she have good luck this week? Are we uh, highly profitable? Is, is something going in my favor or is it going negative? So uh, I'm going to use your strategy and hopefully it's going to work for me. <laughs> Not, not a bad idea. If I don't get the raise, I'll blame you. So uh, I'll come back to you with it. <laughs> uh, Janice, at, at this point in the show, we'd like to remind our listeners that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the Voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill Horan, and today we're speaking with Janice Kaplan, author of How Luck Happens. We'll be right back after this break. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was... Living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. Or if that resume was from someone who... Worked 12-hour shifts at the recycling company with my dad, who's 72. That taught me a work ethic that I carry with me every day. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone... Growing up where I did, a lot of things could have gotten in the way of my goals. But I learned to push through, and that's what I bring to work every day. So maybe it's time we look beyond the resume and look to grads of life. Discover new ways to develop great talent that are so much more than what's on paper at gradsoflife.org. 
A public service announcement brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. Welcome back. You're listening to The Secrets of Success on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, and today we're talking to Janice Kaplan, author of How Luck Happens. Janice, um, I think you mentioned in your book that uh, we have greater control over our future than we actually realize, which that that gave me a lot of uh, positive feeling because I think, well, if I have the control and someone who's a great writer and a great scientist is saying this, I must have more control. Can you give us some guidelines how we can use this control based on your knowledge of luck and the research that you've been doing? I think it very often helps to have a bigger perspective um, and to really be able to think about where you're going. So let's turn it around for a second and talk about bad luck because bad luck happens to people and we worry about bad luck all the time. You lose a job, somebody gets sick, uh, bad things happen. And what very often happens in that case is you you can only see where you are right now. You've lost your job, you've been fired, you kind of dig a hole, and, and you don't know how to get out. You're upset, you're scared, you have a mortgage, and, you know, or, or you just don't know where you're going to go. And very often, I, I think the best thing that one can do and the way to get that control back is to pull back. Try to almost look at yourself as if you're standing on a mountain looking down at yourself because quite literally picture that when you're standing on that mountain and maybe looking down at a forest, you can see all different paths, right? You you have the perspective of all the different paths that are going off when you're standing there in that forest in that old little, you know, hole that you've dug. You can only see one path or you can't see any paths. Um, a, a less metaphoric way to look at it is imagine where you're going to be a year from now. Imagine you're telling the story of, let's say you lost your job. Let's say you're telling the story of last year, today, I lost my job and I felt so horrible about it. And here's what I did. So what is that story that you want to tell? What is that story that you're going to be able to say, so here's what I did to end up where I am now, a year later, which is a good position. Um, And I think if you think of it that way, if you give yourself that perspective, if you give yourself that power to say, yeah, I get to control that story, and where I am today maybe isn't perfect, maybe isn't where I want to be, but I get to use that instead of seeing it as something dreadful that's happened, I get to see it as an opportunity. And part of luck is always taking opportunities, seeing possibilities. So try to do that, and I think you very much can see that control, see that possibility of where you can end up. I like that very much, and uh, that that gives me a segue into um, uh, something I read about in your book, and I'd like you to tell our audience about it. Why is an invisible gorilla important on this uh, subject of luck? Oh, <laughs> the, the famous invisible gorilla. The famous story, uh, yes. Yeah, that was an experiment uh, that was done, and I'm sure most of your listeners know about it. It's a video that you can you can find online. Just you know, Google "invisible gorilla," and um, what it was was researchers uh, brought people in and they asked them to watch a video, and um, uh, it was two teams of college kids in different colored T-shirts, and and um, they were bouncing a basketball and passing it to each other. And forgive me, I forget which color, but I think they asked them to you know count how many times the people in the red t-shirts pass the ball to each other um, and you watch this video and you're very focused on count on watching the people in the red t-shirts and uh, and seeing how many times they pass the ball and bounce the ball and pass it and you are and at the end of the video it says you know how many times did you count and you say 15 and it flashes up 15 and you're all excited look I got that right and then it says did you see the gorilla and you go what gorilla and they do the video again um and this time you're not focused on the people in the red t-shirts you just watch the gorilla and you you use the video and you actually see in the middle of the video a guy dressed in a gorilla costume walks out into the middle of the uh of the uh, of the field pounds his chest and walks off and 
something like 90% of people, every time they have done that experiment with everybody from Harvard undergraduates to young people to old people, people just don't see it because there's only so much focus we can have. And if you're that focused on watching, you know, the, the folks in the red T-shirts, you actually miss something as dramatic as a red as a gorilla. Um, and, you know, now that you know it, when you watch it, you probably will see the gorilla. So they've done a second video. Um, and, uh, and and this time everybody gets sees the gorilla and is very proud of themselves. But then the questions are, uh, I forget exactly again now, but, you know, it was, did you see that the background changed color? Did you see that the lights changed color? Uh, and again, we miss so much of what's going on around us when we're too focused. So what's really important in creating luck is being able to move your attention, being able to change your attention from close attention to distant attention, to being able to see things very, uh, uh, very focused, you know, as you're watching who's, how many passes there are, but also not losing track of the bigger picture, the bigger perspective, and what's happening around you. Uh, my my co-author Barnaby likes to say that luck is all around us, and we just have to be able to see it to grab it. Um, if you're not seeing the luck, you, you can't take it. And I think on many uh, levels, one, just for a little fun with the show, uh, two, to give our audience something to talk about and segue into how luck happens uh, after the show. Uh, if they Google it, I, and I did this, it's under invisible the Invisible Gorilla, and I think it's uh, really just about a minute or a minute and a half the... Uh, um, uh, video that they show about it and of course now you know that there's a gorilla you know running around there but it will make for a little fun with some friends of yours and uh, you can also so show them uh, how much we can learn by someone like Janice and Barnaby who are doing this research and putting it in book form for us and maybe we can change our luck and, and again sports teams t- today will do anything to change the luck by 3% or 4% if we can do even that much or maybe 5 or 10%, how great that would be in our life and maybe get that perfect job, the perfect mate, or just a new car that we really like. <laughs> Janice? And, you know, you, you were talking about sports, and, and, and so often when there, a mistake is made in sports, um, it is because the person is focused in the wrong direction. Their attention is, is in the place where it shouldn't be, uh, or they've been able to not been able to go back and forth between the close attention and the distant. Janice, I want to focus our listeners' attention on me for a few seconds because I'm going to tell them they're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill Haran, but the important person today is Janice Kaplan, spelled K-A-P-L-A-N. She's the author of How Luck Happens. And Janice, would you give us that website once again? Uh, sure. Uh, my website is www.janiskaplan.com, and uh, you can also find information about the book at the howluckhappens.com website and uh, my uh, other best-selling book, um, the gratitudediaries.com website. And, so lots of lots of information. And Janice, I'll support what you're saying and tell our audience, this is a fun read. If you're in an airport, you want to pick up a book or if you're just sitting on the beach or wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, you'll get a lot of fun stories out of it. You'll realize you can change things about your life and you'll be the most interesting person at the next party you go to when you start dropping these facts and tell people about an invisible gorilla. That always gets people's attention. And to our audience also, if you didn't get to hear the full show today, you can go to nccradio.org for a podcast of the show. Just hit Secrets of Success podcasts and you can listen to Janice Kaplan once again. You can hear the full show or if you want to, some of your friends or you know family members to hear it. Now, Janice, in your book, you mentioned that there's kind of six key words and I'm going to uh, let you know what I wrote down and ask you to talk about it. Persistence, focus, and attention to possibilities. Can you explain why these are so important in creating our own luck? Well, I think they are they are part of that, um, that that bigger picture that we started off talking about. You know, persistence is is that sense of hard work of not giving up. Of of uh, you got to keep trying. You got to find as many ways into things as possible. Um, the uh, what were your other two there? I, I think you you said it was persistence, <laughs> focus, and atti- excuse me, attention to possibilities. 
Right. Well, well, I think it's that last one that's that's uh, really key um, because you need to be able to see the possibilities in your life, and you need to be able to see that they, we all have so many more possibilities, so many more ways of making luck, so many more ways of advancing ourselves than we sometimes realize. And to be able to think about going in a different direction sometimes than other people. Uh, a lot of us think that if we just stick to the, to the straight path that there is one road to success. And over and over again, when we spoke to uh, pe- successful people, we found quite the opposite, that they did a lot of zigging and zagging, that they went in ways that were unexpected, uh, that they took possibilities and opportunities when they came along. And I think the one thing that so many people will, uh, I'm sure, have told you on, on this show before is that what you think you're going to do is not necessarily what you're going to do. Uh, the way you make luck, the way you make a career, the way you make life is by seeing what possibilities are there and then turning them around and using them to your advantage and uh, putting every bit of focus and persistence you have behind it uh, to make sure that you can that you can power ahead and uh, make something of, of those possibilities. Janice, I guess most of us, if we're playing cards or some game of chance or something that might involve what we call luck, if we get a few wins on the slot machine or something, we'll say, I feel lucky. I'm going to play some more this evening. Um, does it really work that way? Does uh, I'll use the expression, does luck come in cascades? And uh, is it just that we're more confident then? Or is that just uh, our perception? And is it right or wrong? Well, I would separate those two things out. Um, slot machines and lotteries and, and those things that are just absolute random chance and uh, lotteries where the odds are completely against you. Those are probably the worst examples of luck because those are so completely, completely random. So uh, you you don't have any control over those. You're never going to make yourself actually lucky on those. With other things in your life, I think luck does come in cascades, but only because once you start making luck, you figure out how to continue making luck. And the people who who know how to do that do continue to make luck. And... uh, uh, I, I think sometimes when you, another thing is when you have good luck, share it with somebody else. When you have good opportunities, when you have something that's helpful that has happened, share it. Because giving luck is like giving gratitude. It, it comes back to you. And uh, it's not why you do it, but it does, it, it, it does rebound in a very positive way. And it also, if I may say, makes the world a little better place, too. I, I like that as a way to wrap up. And I also like it as making the world a better place if nothing else more people will like me and uh, I, I do think it comes back to us because so few people think that way and, and I'm glad that that's your approach I also think we have a title for your next book when to zig and when to zag uh, <laughs> Janice before we wrap up I want to let our audience know the book is how luck happens it's by our guest Janice Kaplan spelled k-a-p-l-a-n and Janice once more would you give us your website it is uh, Janice, www.janicekaplan.com, and uh, it's a place to contact me on that website. And if you've read one of my books or have a thought, uh, please do contact me, and I, I always get back to people and love to hear stories and share stories. I think you have a lot of great stories, and I think people who get hold of How Luck Happens will also be the most popular person at the next cocktail party. I know I'm going to be talking about The Invisible Gorilla for several weeks to come. Thanks so much for being with us today. We'd like to remind our audience that you've been listening to the secrets of success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.